Blessings everybody and good evening. Welcome to Anita and the Man. I'm Brian Hewitt of MCM Ministries Bible LA. We are a full name morning star communications network. We come to you with the love of the Lord going to country to country here in the early morning hours and evening time here in North America. Right here in Los Angeles, California, the west coast of North America. Uh, we are to 6 p.m. hour as we begin to raise the praise for you this evening. And we're going into Revelations chapter 11, Revelation chapter 11, 1 through 14. 1 through 14 today, we're speaking of the two witnesses. And tomorrow we're going to be speaking of the edge of eternity. So let us all, as we are preparing and putting our finger before inside the Bibles, let us go before the throne of God and pray. Dear Jesus, we are on the edge of your glory, the edge of your eternity. We ask you to help build our foundation upon the, with gold, silver, and precious rubies and ointments, that nothing can be burnt in any type of fire. You put the seal of, of, your, of your approval inside our hearts. We go about their day, our day, our daily bread, forgiving, forgiving those who've done us wrong, lifting up those in forgiveness and, forgive, and asking you to forgive us of our sins. We ask you, O Lord, upon this grace you, that you have taught us love, which brings us to your straight and narrow, many are called if you are chosen. We thank you for this way of just moving our feet, not to, not to be a part of any type of comfort zone, but to keep on going forward in the matchless name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we love thee. And before we get going, brethren, Anita and myself, Brian Tewitt, we, we invite you to come and visit us at .com. We have received a lot of blessings and love from over 200 countries we bring our broadcast to every day. And we thank you for joining us. We thank you for your prayers and support. Again, so we want to get to know you so come and ask us any questions and come to our contact link at BrianTewitt.com, BrianTewitt.com. So let's go right into Revelations chapter 11, verse 1. And there was given me a reed like unto a rod. And the angel stood saying, Rise and measure the temple of God, and the altar and them that worship therein. But the court which is without the temple leave out, and measure if not, for it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall thy tread under foot forty and two months. And I, will give, and I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days, clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the altar of the earth. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. These have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of the prophecy, and have power over waters to turn them to blood, and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them, and shall overcome them and kill them. And their dead bodies shall lay in the streets of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, which also our Lord was crucified. And they are the people and kindreds of tongues and nations shall see the dead bodies three days and a half, and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put into graves. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them, and make merry, and shall send gifts one to another, because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on earth. And after the three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered, entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw, the, saw them. And they heard a great voice from heaven, saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. And the same hour was a great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell. And in the earthquake were slain of men seven thousand, and the remnant was affrighted, and gave glory to, to the God of heaven. The second woe is past, and behold, the third woe cometh. We still haven't learned. We still haven't learned. If there's an earthquake in your life, brethren, it's, it's God 
bringing that new life, a new moment into his glory right now. God is bringing you his love, the precious rubies of his time. God is bringing you that ointment of truth. A word like we just read last night, Joan took a bolt, the scroll, which had the translation of what the seven thunders were saying. When he put it in his mouth, it was sweet. When it went to his belly, it was bitter. We have to eat the word of God. We have to digest this truth no matter what. This is going to happen. Say, say, unto, say unto you, do unto you, we're going to be persecuted. Yet, at the same time, if we don't want to be persecuted when we're living the life of Christ, You're just going to get fooled for the rest of your life in the ways of sin, in the ways of, of, of Satan giving you false hope. I've had many, many attempts in my life, and all those who were given, given great promises of, will you do this for me and that for me, you know, they never got anything. Many went to jail for a long time. Many suffered their own insanities and breakdowns. But you cannot play against God, and you can't play against God's people. And woe unto them that still cannot understand the revelations where we are now up in, in Revelations 1 through 14. You need to focus on your reality of your redemption with God. If you're telling me you're believing, you've been saved and all sanctified and perfumed holiness, the fragrance of your own life, then you've got to stop living the double standard life. God always has a witness. Even in this time of great wickedness and absolute rebellion against God, He has His witnesses in this in this sin cursed world. The goal of this chapter, of this lesson, is to give glory and to exalt the blessed name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is possibly the most difficult chapter at this book. It is simply so deep that it could literally spend hours explaining all the twists and turns that are available here. And we have the polite disagreements and dialogues of whom the true, true two witnesses are. However, we will try to get to the gist, to the gist of everything here. Please notice that the events described here take place within the first three and a half years of the tribulation. The Antichrist himself has established world peace, world religion, world economy, and a seven-year contract with the nation of Israel. Let's notice the events of this pretense period. The temple of worship. Antichrist needs a temple. Well, the wonder. Men will build a temple to worship and sacrifice to God who has already accomplished all things. So does God need another temple? No. Solomon's temple was destroyed in 583 B.C. by Nebuchadnezzar. Zerubbabel's temple was destroyed in 168 B.C. by Antiochus. And Herod's temple was destroyed in 70 A.D. by Titus. Now, the temple is a church of believers. There are two temples of the future, the Millennium Temple and the Tribulation Temple. Ezekiel chapter 40 to 44. The Jews will rebuild the temple. They are already beginning the process that we make this that will make this possible. As you study the, this lesson upon our hearts, we are on Jewish ground. We are discussing a future temple. At the same time, we must lift up our own temple, our own vehicle, and make God a habitation of His glory. Let God bring this to all and all. The Jews must return to the homeland, be ridiculed, fulfilled. Yet many philosophers say this was fulfilled in 1948. I'd like some of those philosophers to give my wife a call tonight, please, while I'm still on the air. And the temple must be, must be rebuilt. The, good, the difficulties involved, the, chronolo the chronologically mentioned, the three and a half years. Daniel's prophecy concerning the Antichrist in Gen Daniel chapter 8, verse 10. He will allow the temple to be rebuilt, but after three and a half years, he will set himself up as God to be worshipped. Second Theologians, chapter two, verse four. The chastisement method mentioned. 
The rod is a type of judgment. This temple is under ju judgment from God. Why? It rejects the ultimate sacrifice of Jesus upon the cross and substitutes the sacrifices of men. Our part is given to the Gentiles, and they will be the instruments of judgment. Luke chapter 21, verse 24. And as you come into any sermon, uh, um, anything that my wife and I do, please grab a pen and paper because we don't give you just one scripture verse and run home with it. No, we'll, we'll give you, as my wife, who is a wonderful cook, she likes to load the plate. All you can eat scripture buffet, okay? And I'm right behind her. The two witnesses, the church is gone. But God still has his men, his, his, I, God has his way, because God is God. They are real people. Sackcloth, money, preaching, misery, no message of hope and comfort. No message of hope and comfort. They preach. Probably, uh, what do you say? I, I believe they're preaching Jesus as a fulfillment of the Holy Scripture. The olive trees, the candlesticks, the spirit and light, there will be ministers in the power of, of God's spirit preaching his light. Zechariah chapter 4, 3 and 14. And they are unstoppable power to devour enemies with fire, stop the rain, and send plagues from the water to blood. Who are they? Several guesses. Elijah, Malachi chapter 4, verse 5. Elijah never died. Elijah's power a lone voice in his generation. Moses, Moses mentioned in Malachi chapter 4, verse 5 with, Ma with Elijah. Moses seen with Elijah in Matthew 17 on Mount Transfiguration. The miracles and plagues were performed by Moses, a lone voice. Well, there's one more. Remember Enoch. He too was a lone voice of God. He never died and must, and all must die. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. It doesn't really matter, but God, what matters is that God has always got, got his men, such as Noah. Do we want to be on, like those individuals banging on the door of the ark saying, Noah, Noah, let us in, let us in, let us in. God, God, let us in, let us in. And I know you're not. Just read the parable of the ten virgins. Five are wise and five were what? Amen. Foolish. We have to <clears throat> be focused with what God wants. Be focused with, with all that is coming to an, a polite end to all of our lives tonight. We are walking away from sin. Yes, it doesn't mean that yours truly, Brian Hewitt and Anita Hewitt, we haven't had our chapters of sin in our past. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All, and that includes me, the goody two uh, ministers who play both fences, but hey, I'm speaking out and aloud and let them all be offended because what? I speak the loving truth of God. Here we go. Offering time in the sanctuary. So, brothers and sisters, we, we come bringing you not just our experience in going in front of our cameras here, our studios here, and we love our studios because they are of humble, humble surroundings. And we just, you know, have fun in the Holy Ghost. Raymond Johns, Raymond himself, and each his son, did the whole set design, you know. So we, hope, we love everything that God is doing for us. We are on the move. We are a growing ministry. We cannot do this alone. We do not beat our own drum to ourselves. We invite you to join us on our crusades. Come and get to know us at Brian Chuta. Come and going back to Africa, India, Tanzania, England for television crusades. The blessed news of the loving Jesus Christ coming forward for the powers of the internet, the iPhones, the data devices, the Blackberries, the um, Nokia, Nokia Lumina, we thank you, Jesus. And we come into, and our work continues growing here in, in Canada, and our work continues here in Los Angeles, California. And in 2013, we're going to Australia. So 
We want you to join join us with our travels, be part of our evangelical team, our medical team, as well as our translation team, which, which, which is going on up in, in Asia as we are speaking. And your return and investment of your offering will come back to you 1,000-fold, depending on how deep you lift up your offering of obedience to God every day, and how deep you wish to be crucified every day, and baptized by the blood, blood of Calvary and carrying their cross. Dear Jesus, we love you. Also, brothers and sisters, those who do not know Christ, this is your night. We are speaking of the true witness, two witnesses. We are speaking of the power of three of the greatest prophets that never experienced physical death, Moses, Elijah, and Enoch. And we go forward in everything, everything that we're saying. And for those who are not saved, listen carefully. Romans 10:13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Repeat this after me, please. Dear God, I admit I am a sinner, and I need your forgiveness. I believe that Jesus Christ died in my place, paying the penalty for my sins. I am willing right now to turn my sin and accept Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. I commit myself to you and ask you to send the Holy Spirit into my life and to take control and to make me the kind of person you have always wanted me to be. Thank you, Jesus, for bringing me forward. Thank you, Jesus, for loving me. That's my wife singing your name in the background. I am praising your name. Most important, most important, the angels of heaven are singing your name before the throne of God. We come right now, brothers and sisters. In speaking the loving truth of Jesus and speaking the loving truth that God wants us to have now take this love this we are yours give us this day that daily bread give us your time frame right now give us his holiness right now now my Lord now come into this and bring us to your love Bring us into your time frame. Bring, bring us to your moment right now. Isaiah chapter 49, 22, verse 23 says, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will lift my hand and an oath to the, to the nation, set, set up my standards for the peoples. They shall bring your sons in their arms, and your daughters shall be carried on their shoulders. Kings shall, be, shall foster your fathers, and their queens your nursing mothers. They shall bow down to you and their faces to the earth, and lick up the dust of your feet. Then, sh then will you know that I am the Lord, for they shall not be ashamed who wait for me. Ezekiel chapter 20 verse 41. I will accept you as a great sweet aroma when I bring you out from the peoples and gather you out of the countries where you have been scattered. Again, we are speaking of the end times through Ezekiel. Thousands of years before John ever saw this happen on the island of Patmos. Going again through 41 through 44 is equal 20. And I will be hallowed to you before the Gentiles, and you shall know that I am the Lord. When I bring you into the land of Israel, into the country for which I raise my hand in an oath to give you your fathers. And there you shall remember your ways and all your doings with which you are defiled. And you shall loathe yourselves to your own sight because of, the, of all the evils that you have committed. Then you shall know that I am the Lord when I have dealt with you for my name's sake, not according to your wicked ways, nor according to your own corrupt doings, O house of Israel, says the Lord God. John 8:28. Then Jesus said to them, When you lift up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am He, and that I do nothing of myself. But as my father taught me, I speak these things. I speak these things. The completion of their ministry. Killed by the beast. If you are in God's will, nothing can harm you. The bodies lie unburied in the street for three and a half days in a city of vice, vanity, and violence, Jerusalem. Ridiculed until the advent of TV. 
this will be fed this will feed the drug induced godless wicked of the day the earth dwellers will throw a party the devil devil's Christmas wine they're preaching trouble to sinners the preaching of the word brings torment and conviction amongst people people do not like to be faced with their own their sin people hate it now and they, they will definitely hate it then as I have said to my wife and she agreed and she loves it when I say I take it as a compliment when Satan attacks me because I speak the truth and that frustrates his people his army his ways I have to do say Jesus get thee behind me I also get a kick out of these people that call themselves gods and have ancestral relationship with their own daughters you know that is just you know hey they're nothing but Satan's wet dream a poodle a puppet nothing and we go into this time brethren the endless realm of God's love those who claim to be the high Pharisees of any type of broadcast company and there's quite a few of them here in Southern California you're done you're done with God's you're not going to give you 40 years you're done your sin is exposed you can hire all the patsies you want to worship you but in the end times of end times all those who have been playing God their sins exposed we're fighting the fight of good faith I need tonight we want you to join this fight we want you to be part of this fight we want you to, to go and be changed you if you want if you are an actor singer dancer DJ television show host you may not have you have to give up that job or not I'm not asking you to but God wants you to be ambassador to him and put him first before anything else but God has a plan he has great provisions for you come into this time his endless realm of his love bring us the actual realities that we can be spared oh God oh God come unto us we went from the seven thunders to the to the eating of the little book to the two witnesses and again let me just go over Revelation 10 chapter 10 verses 8 through 10 then the voice which I had heard from heaven spoke to me again and said go take this little book, little book which is open in the hand of the angel who stands on the sea and on the earth so I went to the angel and said to him give me the little book and he said to me take and eat it and it was sweet as honey in my mouth but when I had eaten it my stomach became better the angel here who is holding this book who stands in the sea and on the land this is either Jesus Christ or an angel that came right from before the presence of Christ he is the angel if you look back in chapter 10 verse 1 you see that this symbolism cannot be anyone else and the utterings after his ministry so we see the time element that this line of Judah spoke first and laid everything out then the seven thunders took up from where he left off and uttered their message as well and after him in succession so the angel from whose hand John took the little book was Jesus Christ himself the authoritative message to the church the words the spirit the words which the spirit and which are life as it says there in John that he gives to his prophets and to his t apostles to teach others so we could spread his love so this must be Jesus Christ coming out of the living Word of God and with this time brothers and sisters understand the truth the truth is going to set us all free the truth is going to be with this time no matter what God is going God wants you to cast all your worries and troubles on his shoulders not your shoulders not your spouse's shoulders but your shoulders go and be changed go 
and fly. Fly with Jesus. Fly amongst the globe and be changed in the name of Jesus. Fly in the world. And have yourself be healed by the living touch of, touch of Christ. Be unto us, O Lord. Change us, O Lord. Guide us, O Lord. Bring about your instrument of truth, O Lord. For in our master's name of Jesus, in Jesus' name. You want a healing. Been through four or five doctors, you still have the same diagnosis of cancer. And you want looking for healing. You go to some circus performer who thinks he can give you a healing if you give him a couple thousand dollars and that doesn't work. So what's left? I can't give it to you. Only if you know Jesus Christ. And then God can use Anita and myself, perhaps another minister around, from, around the corner from where you live, to heal you. But then again, if you turn yourself over to the Lord, you, you are obedient to what he's bringing into your heart at the moment, God will heal you. Have faith in God. Mark, Mark 11.22. Have faith in God. Tomorrow, we finish chapter 11. We're calling that the edge of eternity. With this time, brothers and sisters, get into the living word of God. Lift up your daily prayer. In this, your parts of the world, unlike here in North America, your day is just about to begin with the sunrise. Express the joy of the morning. Express the joy in the morning, brothers and sisters. Get into your daily practice of praying and fasting. Uh, lifting up your repentance, the art of fasting. Get into eventually. Pray ceaselessly. Get into small group Bible studies. Bible believing accountability churches. Go into this time frame right now. And feel the message of the Lord coming to you. Come into this time right now. For in the matchless name of Jesus, in Jesus' name, we love thee. Let's go before the throne of God and pray out. Dear Jesus, we love thee. You have placed us on your road. You have put us where you want us to be because you are God, O God of gods. One truth, one love, one baptism. We don't no longer walk on this earth. We tread on the earth. We walk on and we own it in the name of Jesus. We have the power to stomp on the heads and snakes and scorpions. Jesus, you are coming back. Your name is faithful and true. Coming back for the bride first, and then as we ascend up to heaven with you, you come back with a vengeance and vengeance and a vengeance. Lord, bring your peace and your heavy hand of love upon Syria. Bring peace to the execution of military that are going through to Nigeria, to Mali, and to other countries around, around that country of Africa. Bring a healing through Kenya and the Horn of Africa. Get rid of those evildoers of all of Somalia and bring prosperity and food and blessing and rain to that region. For in the matchless name of Jesus, in Jesus' name, we love thee. Brethren, that does conclude our broadcast for this evening here in the west coast of North America. From our Los Angeles offices here of MCM Ministries, Monistar Communication Network, I'm Brian Hewitt, and on behalf of Anita Hewitt and the man, we thank you for your time until next time. We ask you to stay up to date with our exciting news of our crusades and events at BrianTewitt.com. BrianTewitt.com. We walk by faith and not by sight. Au revoir, adios, good day for the people.